Welcome back to Coding with Flutter. This is the first video of an entire series on the provider package and I have decided to create this series for two different reasons. One is that the provider package has become very popular with Flutter developers and was even endorsed by the Flutter team. And two is that many of you have asked me specifically to create some in-depth step-by-step tutorials about provider. And this is exactly what we are going to do. So in this video, I will give you a quick preview about what provider is and what problems it can help us with. And I will also show you a very simple application just so that we can get a taste for what it's like to work with provider. And in the upcoming videos, I'll cover provider much more in detail. So we will start from the basics and then go all the way to the most advanced use cases so that you can understand how to use provider as the foundation for more complex applications. And if you are new here, please like and subscribe for more Flutter videos. Okay, so let's get started. And this is the main page for the provider package on pub.dev. And the very first line of this page says that provider is a mixture between dependency injection and state management built with widgets for widgets. So let me say this once again, provider can be used both for dependency injection and state management. And we will see exactly what provider is and how it can be used. And I guarantee that we have a lot of stuff to cover, including a lot of important concepts. But before we do any of that, I want to dive right in and show you a very simple application of provider so that you can get a real feel for how to use it. So over here, I've just created a brand new Flutter project and this is already running on the iOS simulator and showing the counter up. And the first thing that I want to do is to add provider to this project. So I can open the pubspec.yaml file and then I'm going to use the pubspec assist extension of Visual Studio Code to install the latest version of provider. So I can type this in and I can select it from this list. And then provider is going to be added automatically to the dependencies for my project. Okay, so now that provider is installed, I want to show you how to use it to support multiple flavors in this Flutter application. And what I mean by that is that I want my app to be configured or behave differently depending on whether I'm running a development, staging or production build. And to do that, we need to do some initial setup. So over here, I can create a new file called flavor.dart. And inside here, I can define a very simple enumeration called flavor. And this will have three possible values called dev, staging and prod for production. So the main idea here is that I want to define three different entry points for this application so that I can run different commands. And then I want to use provider to inject the correct flavor so that it is available to all the widgets inside my app. So over here, I have this diagram that represents the widget tree for the example counter app that we have created. And at the top, we can add a provider which will contain the flavor that we want. And as a result of this, all the widgets in this app will have access to the flavor. Okay, so let's see how to do this in code. So here we have the main Dart file and we said that we want to add a parent provider to my app. So here I can select prop with new widget and this is going to be a provider of flavor dot value and I can just reformat my code. And for this to compile, I need to import flavor and also provider dot dart. And as we can see, this provider is a widget that has a child, which is the my app widget. But I also need to provide a value which is flavor.dev, like this. And later on, we will see how to use different flavors depending on the entry point of the application. Okay, so there are two things to notice here. The first one is that provider itself is a Flutter widget. And the second one is that I need to specify what type of provider I want. And I can do this by using generics and adding flavor as a type. And once again, this is the diagram that represents the updated widget tree for our application. And as you can see, at the very top of the widget tree, we have a provider of flavor. And what this means is that every single widget in this application can find out what the flavor is. So let's see how to do that. And for example, we could scroll down to find the scaffold for this widget. And here we could update the title of this page to show the current flavor. So to do this, we could type the following final flavor equals provider dot of 
of type flavor with context like this and then we could replace this text with flavor dot to string and at this stage we could hot restart the application and as we can see the title now says flavor dot dev which is the value that we have set at the top of the file here so the main thing to point out here is this syntax which we use to retrieve the value of the current flavor and we do that by asking for a provider of flavor and just to be clear, it's very important that we add the type annotation here and then we need to pass the build context so that Flutter can look for an ancestor provider of flavor. So this is where we are inside the my homepage widget and when we call provider of flavor with context, then Flutter we use the context to go up the widget tree until it finds a provider with the correct type. In summary, we have already learned a few things. One, that all providers are Flutter widgets and two, that when we create providers, we need to specify a type. And three, when we want to access a value that is available by a provider, we can use the provider.of syntax. And what we have just built is the simplest possible application of provider that I can think of. By the way, our original goal was to enable multiple entry points for this application, because this is how we can really enable multiple flavors. So what we have at the moment is just a single main file which creates our application with the dev flavor. And if we want to enable the remaining flavors, we need to create separate files. So we can get back to Visual Studio Code and the next step is to create one more file called main underscore staging dot dart and another one as well called main underscore prod dot dart. And I want all these files to create the same application with the same widget tree that we have over here, but with different flavors. So to accomplish this, I suggest that we move all the widgets code from here into a separate file that we can reuse. And we can call this my underscore app dot dart. And now that I have this file, I can go back to this other file and I can cut all this code and I can paste it in here and then I can import the files that I need, such as material.dart and if I scroll down, I find that I also need to import flavor.dart and provider.dart and after I save this, I can get back to main.dart and to fix this compilation error, I need to import my app.dart from the file that I've just created and now that I have this, I can just copy all this code and then I can paste it into staging.dart and update the flavor like this and I can do the same thing over here and update this to prod like this. And now that we have done this, we have successfully enabled multiple flavors in the app and we could use this to point to different backend environments depending on the flavor. Or we could even show something like a developer menu with additional options for testing only when the flavor is dev. And if we use a CI system, then we can specify what flavor we want as well as which entry point to use by using the minus T parameter. By the way, now that we have configured these flavors, if we want, we can run the app from the command line and choose the flavor that we want. But it would be even nicer to set up multiple configuration in Visual Studio Code so that we can more easily switch between different flavors. And to do that, we can open the debug view and then we can select this settings cog icon which reveals a configuration file called launch.json and here I can paste some additional configurations and these match the various files that I have created and after updating this we can get back to the debug view and we can see that it's now possible to choose the configuration that we want over here before we run our app. By the way, if you want to work with multiple flavors, there are some additional steps that you need to do in Android Studio and Xcode as well. But this is not a full tutorial on flavors, and all I wanted to do is to show you how to enable flavors in the Dart code using Provider. And if you want to learn more about flavors, I recommend reading this article by the Flutter community. Okay, so we have completed our very first tutorial on Provider, and what we have seen is how to use Provider as a dependency injection system, so that we can make a flavor accessible inside a widget tree. In any case, I will cover Provider much more in detail in the next videos. If you have enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe so that you can improve your Flutter skills. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.